Mike Franklin, the property tax guy, and today we're going to be uh, reviewing a small claims assessment review hearing in the town of Lysander with Assessor Teresa Golden. A um, little background, uh, right here I am in the lobby of the uh, town of Lysander, and, um, and uh, in this video I'm going to be re reviewing the first part of the, of the, um, of the interaction. Um, this first part will be a ex parte communication and and then discussion as to whether or not the hearing should be recorded. Um, in the next video, we'll get into the actual hearing itself, you know, regarding the, the property tax assessment. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna talk about this a little bit and um, the a little bit of background. <clears throat> the um, you know we'd had some uh, contentious uh, issues with the assessor. Uh, at the Board of Assessment Review uh, and in trying to get data and um, and having the uh, client talk to her about their, her assessment. She's extremely uncooperative. Uh, she uh, delayed my FOIL request. She evaded my FOIL request. At the Board of Assessment Review, she provided um, uh, submissions to the Board of Assessment Review that I had FOILed but did not receive, which is a, uh, a demonstration of a violation of New York State FOIL law. And um, and she's just um, uh, I think what she did was she she took the property uh, it was in Syracuse.com and she used that to selectively assess the property. Uh, she reviewed the inventory. She didn't do the same process with the other properties, and she um, um, and she's using copyrighted materials that don't belong to the town. So and 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 I think what she did was she um, she looked at that story. She may have looked at Zillow, which again is copyrighted materials, and she spent maybe two, three minutes, uh, you know, making adjustment to it. You know, just um, she just basically winged uh, the assessment uh, and, and made adjustments based on inventory. And then, uh, then later on, um, after the tentative tax roll, the property owner brought to her attention that the um, that it was a single family, not a two family, and that the inventory was wrong. You know, and when she can't even get what class it's in. When the assessor can't get the class right, you know, what does it say about the rest of the assessment? But anyway, um, um, there's uh, um, just a very poor customer service with this with this assessor, and and she um, she selectively assess a property in violation of New York State law. She um, she uh, uh, evaded and delayed foil, and then the board of assessment review didn't provide proper decisions. Uh, they did provide a, a reduction, which you know we appreciate, uh, but they they provided no explanation as to where they came up with their figure. Again, it's so because they said so. They operate pretty much like the assessor does. It's so because they said so. Just don't quantify anything. Um, and the board of assessment review only allowed five minutes, of which uh, two minutes the assessor was, you know, rambling on about something. Um, and uh, so we, we, you know, cutting into our time, we didn't even have an opportunity to really talk and explain our position. Uh, but anyway, um, which is another issue, the town should allow people at least 15 minutes to have these, to you know, at the barn. But anyway, I'm going to proceed and, um, and I'm going to um, show you what transpired. Through this window, you can see the hearing officer and that door is locked. So I'd gotten to the, I'd gotten to the town early to make certain they wouldn't have this ex parte communication. I turn my back in the lobby for two seconds and he goes behind this door and they go into another office and they're having an ex parte communication, pretty much the very definition of it. So I'm going to play it so you can see what, uh, see what transpired. Those people are having an ex parte communication in there and it is highly inappropriate. There we go. There we go. Shouldn't be having these special meetings without us being here. Um, we were discussing uh, um, the town attorney has objected to you recording. Yep, this objection meeting. noticed. Okay. And, if and that we, we should have, I should have been in part of that conversation. Well, I didn't know until last week, and I had no way to contact Ms. Uh, Mr. Facilda. So, so we can turn off the camera. I'm not turning off the camera until I hear, unless Ray tells me to. Well. And, uh, and I have an explanation as to why. <laughs> well, are you going to bring your pizza in? Or? Um, 
Oh, you want? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if you want them to hear this or not. That's all. So I guess I will be leaving. No, I think he's going to get smart. He's going to get the pot. But I, it. What do we have here is ex parte communication number two. Um, uh, I left the camera on the table, and then um, you know they'd locked my clients out, so I had to go let them in. And um, so initially, the the fact that that door opened was just uh, you know was just lucky that somebody happened to be going through that door. That's the only way I got in there. Um, and then the assessor is making excuses for the ex parte communication. Well, it's not the assessor's responsibility, it's the hearing officer's uh, responsibility to avoid uh, ex parte communications and the appearance of impropriety. And, um, and this, in this case, you know, there are very significant appearances of impropriety, especially, uh, you know, after the fact. Um, the, the, um, the, uh, the hearing officer uh, basically, you know, I've dealt with him for four years. And my impression is, is that he's conscientious and he tries to do the right thing. But, you know, in this particular case, um, I think that he was flustered by the recording issue. And, um, and he, uh, in his mind, trying to do the right thing, he did the wrong thing numerous times. And, um, and uh, you know, he's, he's uh, experienced at doing this and he should not be... Uh, you know he knows better than to participate in these ex parte communications, but uh, but you can see the disingenuous uh, behavior of that uh, of that assessor. I mean, you know she's something else. You know the the attorney doesn't uh, uh, want her to participate um, in the in the um, in the upcoming uh, continued video. Uh, you'll say that I don't blame them for not wanting to uh, have this record. And what I meant by that is, if I were the town, I wouldn't want that assessor to be recorded because, you know, because um, it, it just isn't a good optic for them. And, and she, she lies repeatedly. And at one point, she went on a five-minute diatribe of a, of a lie on a, based on a false premise. Five minutes. I've seen lawyer, I've seen uh, assessors lie in these hearings before, but I've never seen one go on a five-minute lie. I've never seen anything like this one. But uh, I'll, I'll I'll proceed with the um, I'll proceed with the uh, recording. Right off the bat, we've got disingenuous uh, behavior. It's, it's just not appropriate. Wow. <coughs> good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Okay. Uh, All right. I'm a little slower these days. Don't you take your time. Don't you rush. There's <laughs> nothing important we have to do today that does should jeopardize that. So. Thank you. Uh, All right, just for the record, my name's Rick Resenda. I'm a small claims hearing officer. He knows this, but you haven't met me before. Uh, which means I work for the state, I don't work for the county, I don't work for the town. I'm a hearing officer, which means there are no formal rules of evidence, and these, therefore there isn't like a formal, you know, hearing thing. Uh, what I hear is perceived to be the truth. However, I'm going to ask your, your representative, Dr. Campbell Roth, pursuant to the attorney for the town being concerned about this and uh, documenting Real Estate Property Code 735, which says that there will be no, um, the hearing on, there will be no doc, uh, proceedings involving the parties shall have, you know, no documentation. Can I say that, Ron? Yeah, there you go. That's you know, first of all, I, I object to the ex parte communication that just transpired. It's just highly inappropriate. It's just more disingenuous behavior right from the get go. Well, we're going to, we're left with two choices. Uh, your choice is this you can shut the camera off, or the town will give me their information. And this doesn't say anything about them. And leave them and, put, and they will leave. Um, the room so I'm going to give you a choice this 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 doesn't say anything I'm about just that. giving you a choice okay so, so the camera's either off or she's leaving 
Um, the uh, well, you know, you, you know, she has her submissions. She can do that. Okay. Um, but uh, but uh, uh, Ray, one thing I want you to take into consideration. Now you spoke to the state uh, about all those, correct? Yeah. And uh, and um, I think this state, when they spoke to you, were um, had fresh information. That was their information for me was that generally they thought if there was a reason for it to be pursued, uh, that there was some general that I had the choice. Okay, that's all. They right. didn't say that I had to, and they didn't say I couldn't. They did document that if you were going into a formal courtroom, you would and you you would normally ask for and to get and apply for a permission to video or to such as the news corporations or something like that. Again, I am. The I, question I, I'm a is, member of the press. Then you Everyone is. Then file. Then file. Okay. Then, so then file so, the documentation. Show me file the documentation. I I, I, so I I told you a week ago that I was doing this, and you agreed. I I I had no at that time. I had no, I had no chance to reference this or do anything with this. Well, the again, problem I, I, is okay that the town attorney, who basically is spoken to the town supervisor, hmm. said that she can present her stuff leave me the information and leave but she does they don't want her to be recorded i don't blame them to tell you the truth well, that's but, but 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 here so here's what i was going to say about the state so last monday the uh the office of court management issued a memo to the entire court system that you need to allow these people to to record in public spaces and that's when they were speaking to you that was fresh information in their mind and um and and uh, so this just happened this past week Okay. And so, so again, this is a First Amendment activity, First Amendment protected activity. Constitution, state law, local law, policy. How is this? How, how is, how is you, recording First Amendment? The, the, the courts, the courts have established. Just, the courts have established that videotaping is is a, is a connected to the First Amendment. Okay. It's it's fine. it's just subtle I, law, I, right? It's simple. She's she has to do what the town tells her. I think I'm here to do to hear your side of the case. Mm -hmm. The rules of the game, as you know, is that the town is concerted to be the more because they do this on a regular basis. They're the ones perceived to have the expertise. Mm -hmm. And so, so, what what are the options here, so, Henry? So the options are shut the camera off, do not record, or she can give me the information that she has on her side of the table, and she will leave. Mm -hmm. Can I just ask a question? Go ahead, please. That's all right. Okay, so I'm, <clears throat> I wanted to pause it to just cover a couple of his points before we move on. Um, so he's um, he's um, you know he's saying that the RPT 735 you know precludes it. Um, I uh, you know that you can't allow you can't have transcripts. You know, is a video a transcript? You know, to me it really doesn't make any difference. Um, uh, there's um, you know, unless the um, the hearing officer has a good reason why it should not be recorded, uh, such as protecting, you know, a member of the public uh, or a victim of some sort, you know, there is nothing in this particular case for that. Um, so that's not an issue. So um, I just, uh, uh, you know, I mean, he's handling it the proper way. What he's doing is um, he's saying if we insist upon recording, uh, the hearing out the town attorney has advised the um, assessor to not participate, and that's fine. They have every right to do that, although it seems like it's their job to participate. Um, you know, they're not they're not obligated to it. There's nothing illegal about it. It's just bad customer service. Um, so the hearing officer, um, uh, you know, the state will say that um, you know it's at his uh, you know discretion. And I, I disagree, you know, I'm not a lawyer, but I, I think that the hearing officer has to allow the recording, um, you know, unless, unless he has a compelling reason, you know, why. And, um, and so that's just my opinion for, for, for what that's worth and we'll, we'll continue on. And I'm not trying to fight with you. Either. No, no, no. We're not trying to fight with anyone. If, in respect to you, Teresa, if Teresa leaves and leaves you with her paperwork, if we do decide to continue filming, does that in any way, shape, or form affect the status of this hearing if she's not present during it? We just want to present the facts that we have. You, 
you have the right to present whatever facts you yeah. want, whether she's here or not. That, okay. that, that is not going to be changed. Okay? That won't change. Your, that will not change. Okay. The question is, she's going to give me some documentation mm -hmm. um, that's, that's what it, that justifies their positioning as mm -hmm. to how they got to their okay. assessment. Your job as the plaintiff is to prove they made a mistake. So whatever documentation you choose to give me is fine. To say that you want to critique their, of course. you won't have the chance to ask her questions. So you just have, whatever I have, I have. When I leave here, mm -hmm. I will look at what you gave me, yeah. what I've heard here, yeah. what the town has given me, and I will decide who's got the, the better comparables and the better argument. Okay. In which case, and I haven't looked at your numbers yet, okay. Mm -hmm. If you were asking for $10 for the house and they were at 15 and I said, well, you know, maybe it's 12 and a half, yep. that's my call. Yep. You know, maybe I, I look at and say, you're looking at 10 and I'm like, uh, there's no way, you know, there's no way it's 10. That, yeah. You know, I, I, I would buy this house at 16. Yep. So okay. that's based on the mm -hmm. information you give me to form my sure. opinion. And is her information share? Are we able to look at the information that she provides? Do you have a you? copy for them? Yes, I do. Okay. 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 We will leave you a copy. Okay. That's okay. fine. So, can you again cite the? I think what you're asking is illegal. I'd like you to cite the law that you're saying. That I'm you're saying real estate property code 735 says that there should be no documentation. And you don't have a copy of that. I, I just gave you. A it's copy. not in there. It says it's nothing to do with what we're talking about here. In 735, determination not precedent, no transcripts, a video is a transcript. Uh, let, me, let me see that again. Okay. Look at the sixth word. So at this point, you know, he's, he's quoting um, section 735, which says there's no transcripts. Question is, is the video a transcript? Um, you know, to me, it, it really doesn't make any difference if it's a transcript or not. Um, he, uh, uh, you know, what's kind of confusing about this is he's citing section 735, but he says that he spoke to the state and they said it's his discretion. Well, what is it? Which one is it? So I think that the state knows that, um, that they, uh, that they can't force that. In other words, they, they can't tell me to not record this hearing unless they have a valid reason to do so. And there is no valid reason to do so. It's a, uh, it's that's policy. It does not trump the Constitution, but that's what you're saying. I'm so saying, I'm just saying that I object. Okay. And reserve our right to appeal. You okay. Know? That's and, fine. Um, so so we'll object, object. And what did you guys want to do? I would like I, the facts. I put so much time and effort in this. I would really like to present. The well, facts he's giving you the yeah. opportunity to do that. The question is, is she going to provide submissions or is she going to stay and talk? Which one do you want? I'm I'm good with her staying and talk. Okay. So, All right. I'll turn it off. Okay. Thank it's you. It's uh, highly inappropriate, and these ex parte communications are highly inappropriate. But I'm turning it off now. So the bottom line is, is that um, <clears throat> the hearing officer did not force me to turn the camera off. Um, he said the choices were that the uh, uh, if we recorded, the the assessor would leave and provide submissions, which I think is what probably what we should have done. Um, and, um, and if we didn't record, then, um, you know, then we could have a, a hearing without it being recorded and the assessor would stay. And, um, so I let the client decide which one they wanted to do. And, and the, um, you know, they'd put an enormous amount of work into this. So they wanted to pursue a, uh, a, a normal hearing. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't have done that. If the assessor, if, uh, you know, it's, it's assessor's, um, it's on her. If she doesn't want to participate in the hearing, it's her job to participate in these hearings. And, um, you know, if the town is okay with that, it just doesn't seem like good customer service to me. Um, but anyway, I think the hearing officer did the right thing in this case. Uh, he didn't order me to stop. Um, you know, we, you know, we had options, you know, so they did, he didn't violate, uh, he didn't violate the First Amendment, um, and uh, and the and the um, assessor is, 
you know, you know, she had she had her choice. It was very perfectly legitimate for her not to participate if she didn't want to, uh, if it was being recorded. I don't have an issue with that. It's just that it's poor customer service. It's her job. And moving forward, I think the town of Lysander may want to find themselves an assessor who knows that they're, you know, they work for the public and that their job may entail uh, hearings that are recorded. And if she has a problem with that, then uh, you know, she probably ought to find another job and they should find another assessor who doesn't selectively assess and who doesn't evade FOIL and so on and so forth. But, uh, but anyway, the next video will get into the hearing itself. Again, this hearing officer made a mistake with the um, ex parte communication. And the thing is, is that, you know, it's just not a, it's, it's just not an honest mistake. It's a, um, um, you know, you saw the look of guilt when we, when they walked out of that thing, he wanted to get past that issue. And then you could see the exasperation when he was sitting down. He knew he'd made a mistake or, or he knew that he was caught in a mistake or not, not necessarily a mistake, just plain doing the wrong thing. He's been doing this a long time. Ex parte communications should not happen. And he knows it. And uh, but in the end, he did the right thing in the hearing, and he did the day before. Um, he, you know, if if he if he had um, stopped me from recording this thing and ordered me not to record it, um, you know, I'm I'm not certain what would have transpired from there. Um, uh, I I think he'd be violating the First Amendment. I'm not an attorney, but um, but he didn't do it, so it's, it's kind of irrelevant. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll wait for the day when somebody does try to stop me from doing it. Um, the public has a right to know what's going on in these hearings. So you have a right to know uh, what the assessor is doing or not doing. And they have a right to know what the hearing officer is doing. And, you know, this is a public matter. Everything, you know, you know people should be able to see all of these hearings. And, um, you know, so that they... You know, if they can see these hearings, they can learn how they operate and whether or not they should participate. And they can, they can be uh, better educated about it. But uh, anyway, so that's the first part of the uh, Lysander uh, Small Claims Assessment Review hearing. This is Mike Franklin, the property tax guy. Stay tuned for the next uh, for the next video on this topic.